This week we're diving into grading on Google Classroom. I'm going to start off by showing you two different views of assignments and the gradebook because I think they both have very different purposes that are handy at different times. I'm then going to move in to some different grading techniques that make it quick and easy to give feedback to your students. Third, I will show you how to look at edit history from your students so that you can make sure you're getting genuine student work and seeing how timely um, students are completing their assignments. And then fourth, I will show you how to export your gradebook from Google Classroom. Let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, I'm going to show you two different views of the gradebook on Google Classroom. The first view, um, you don't see all of your class at once, but you can view the assignments at once. So when you're on the stream page of your Google Classroom, you can see upcoming assignments. If they're past the due date, you won't see them listed out here, but that's okay. Um, you can go ahead and click view all and you'll see any assignments that you've assigned to your class. If there's no due date at all, it'll be sorted. If um, there is a due date, it'll be sorted at the bottom and you'll see when the due date is. There's also a tab that says reviewed. So if it doesn't have um, a point value, you can pop it over to that category and I'll show you how to do it. So for example, this is a quick poll that I asked of my students in this test class. So if I click the three dots, I can click mark as reviewed and it will move it out of the way. So you can do that to get assignments out of your way. Maybe if you just want to get back to them later and then you can move them back. So you can kind of decide how that space works well for you. I like viewing my assignments this way because I don't have a big table with lots of check boxes and things. I can just see what assignments I'm working with and if I'm done with them. Um, after I've checked off all of my assignments too, I can move them to that reviewed space and they're out of my way, one and done. So from here, I can click the assignment title and it takes me to the space where I can see who's handed in assignments. Um, remember from last week, we talked about where those private conversations start. I can see it all in this space here and I'm ready to start grading. So this is one way to get to the grading space. That's the first view. Next way that you can get to assignments to grade is to click at the top of your screen where it says grades. Now if you do this and you have a lot of students, you can imagine um, it would be a lot more overwhelming because you end up with lots and lots of rows down and after several weeks you get lots of columns going on. But once again, um, if you can utilize both of the views and mark things as reviewed so that those assignments are out of your way, I think it works really well together. So when I started using both of those views for grading, it made my life feel a lot simpler. So when I'm looking here, I can see who has turned in assignments um, and who has missing assignments. And in the case of my example, a lot of people have missing assignments um, but I can see the point values all in one and um, who has turned things in. So from here, I can click on a student name and see what they've turned in and what's missing. Um, so it's just assigned at this time because it's not past due, so it's not missing. If it's turned in, that means they've completed their work. Missing it means it's past the due date. And I can go back. Um, you can also filter by each of the items if you want to just view missing assignments and remind the student, I'm going to go back to my class list. I'm just hitting the back button and then you can also click on the assignment titles at the top and it'll be the same view that we got from that stream button where you're viewing um, one tab over from the instructions. So um, you can see who has done what. So that's a few ways to get to assignments to grade. At this point, I'm going to show you um, how I grade assignments most efficiently, how to use the rubric tool in Google Classroom, and um, just a few other tips and tricks. So I've showed you how to get to this screen before. If you're looking at the instructions on assignments, you could also get there. Um, you could get there from the stream page and also from the grade tab. So I've chosen a writing assignment. This is an elementary level writing assignment, so it's not going to be lengthy, but what I'm going to do is I can see over here, again, it's sorted. You can sort by status. Um, 
and that'll show who's turned in assignments, who is still working on it, or if it's past the due date, it'll also show you who is missing their assignments, and um, you are ready to, to start clicking through and looking at their work. So I'm going to start with this first assignment here, um, and it's handed in. So if I click the name, it will open a new tab at the top. I know you can't see my tabs, and it will tell me that um, I can see that I'm whose work I'm looking at, the name of the assignment, and um, the work that she handed in. Because I'm using a rubric, the rubric also shows up right on the side here, and I will show you how to create a rubric um, in a little bonus video. But I can go ahead and enter my points here. If I want to just give full credit right away, I can enter it in, and it will automatically add up my points for me. I am not paying attention to how I'm doing this right now, and I can add a comment at the bottom. So I can say, um, awesome work sounding out your words and using sight words, whatever is appropriate for your students. So now I can see um, what her score is. You can also click and give points. You don't even have to type them out. It is so easy to utilize this rubric feature, and this also gives specific feedback. Like I said, I'll do a whole mini video for how to create rubrics because it's so handy. After I'm done um, typing in the points, I don't hit the return button. This is my own personal strategy. You can, and it will send the student an email right away. What I do is I continue paging through the students. So if I click this next arrow, because I started at the top of the stack, I can keep going through the, oh, I gotta save my comment. My bad, I do have to post the comment. <laughs> and then I will go ahead and page to the next student. And I just keep quickly, grading so i am just all about efficiency i will go through and i will grade all of my students work and do all of my comments and it will tally them for me and it auto saves those points and i just go on through the student did not do their work um, you can also choose to not grade it at all and it'll put it in that missing category or you can do a zero whatever your policy is so i go through and grade every single person's thing just quickly flipping through those assignments if it's a Google Slides assignment, sometimes, depending on what kind of a task it is, I can see enough right here in the preview of the slides that I don't even click through all of their slides. I can just use that rubric feature and then just keep on paging through the students. When I'm all done with that, I can go ahead and go back to here. I can see the points that I assigned to everybody. Katie's is still missing. and. Now I'm ready to go. So if students have points, I'll go through and check off all of their names um, and I'll return all of their assignments at once. I do like a mass return. So this student right here, her sentences were done, but she forgot to hit hand in and that's okay. At this point, I can click return and it's going to let you know, like some of these students, they didn't hit the return button. Is that okay? Yes, that's what I want to do. Um, if it's a really simple assignment, I may not give comments until this point. Um, and I'll just send one comment and the same comment will go to every single student. And depending on the task, I think that's appropriate. So I'll go ahead and say super sentence writing. I do try to be more specific with the feedback that I'm giving. Um, especially if like I would not give that sentence that feedback to the student who got zero out of eight but now I can see that these students are graded and done and I can see that Katie's is still not done so I might click on her name and send her a private comment and say um, and ask her if she needs help on her sentences and then um, it'll email this to her as a little reminder prompt And then when Katie is on the stream page of her work, she'll be able to see um, that she has a missing assignment as soon as it's past the due date. That's how I just quickly flip through work and give feedback, and then I return 
all the graded pieces at once and then you can follow up with any students who are left over and that strategy works really well for me. As you can see, I clicked back over to the grades tab of my Google Classroom. So this is the writing assignment that we just graded and we had sent a message to the student to let them know they still needed to hand this in. And um, this student says not hand it in, but we returned it to them and there's a score in there, so it's okay. Um, it used to be that if you returned it to the student the way that I did, um, it took care of that. So I think that's a new change in Google Classroom. I'm not sure what's up with that, but they have a score. So in my book, they are good to go. Um, you can also manually go through assignments and return them here, and it will change them from missing to the green, to the check mark. So I like to go through and mark off student assignments because I would rather have check marks in this grade book screen than all the different words. It's really overwhelming to me, especially if it's something like a check-in from students. If I know students have completed this poll, I'm going to go ahead and go through and check off that students returned this. Um, you can go through one by one and it's reminding me that the student didn't check it off. So it's a lot faster to go to this assignment and just go ahead and check everybody off at the same time. Google's really making sure I know that those students didn't really do the poll, but it's just my test Google Classroom, so that's okay. But then when I return to the grade book, I'm trying to get back here. When I return to the grade book, I just think it looks a lot neater. I know who completed the poll or not, and it just looks a lot cleaner. Um, so I like to keep my grade book really cleaned up so that I can tell right away if someone is really missing something. If there's a number or a check mark in there, I know that it's done and that makes me feel a lot better about life. So I opened a document that was submitted. This is just the same site word page that we've done before and you can see where my grades are and of course as a teacher you can insert comments. Um, but at the top you can see where the last edit was made. If you click those words right there, it opens the version history. And then if you scroll down, you can see every time an edit was made. So you can see where I typed on this from my other test, my test student account. You can see that I was like, I crossed out the one and you, you can just see how the formatting changed and all I did was type. I didn't have to delete anything. I was just typing the whole way. And then um, it really only took me a few minutes to do my work. So you would be able to see if your students um, went through and um, they were revisiting the same document several times or anything like that. Or if there was more than one person collaborating on a document, it would all show up in that box right there, which is very helpful. I think especially um, with different age groups, it just lets you see, um, does it seem developmentally appropriate? So the edit history can be a very helpful tool. If you would like to export your grade book so that it's in Google Sheets, here's how you can do that. I have an assignment open. Once again, you can open any assignment because I'm going to export my whole grade book. This is just the only way that you can access it. And you have to click this little gear from an assignment. If you click it from another page, this isn't an option. When you click the gear, you can download all of your grade book to Google Sheets or CSV file or just these grades. So I'm going to download all of my grades to a Google Sheets file and it will open that in a new tab. I've already done that because I blacked out an area. So this is what my Google Sheets looks like. So you can see if there's a point value assigned to an assignment. Um, I would definitely recolor this because I don't, it's a little hard to look at for a long time, but you can see how everything exports and everything is still in its place. So you can continue to do your gradebook keeping or um, make notes, however works for you. Or if it would be better to insert comments in Google Sheets about why a particular grade um, happens, needs to make corrections, you could do that right here. And it would be a way to um, update your gradebook from anywhere right in Google.